be attracted there is a there is a unseen there is a there is a there is an uh, uh, attracting power that attracting power we have to first receive and when we have that attracting power of christ that attracts now suddenly a example is coming we have seen mother teresa wherever mother teresa goes such a multitudes of people just want to see her i happen to have married many times as we go very near to her suddenly tears coming <laughs> i don't know why we are crying what's happening to us because there is a radiation of the holiness there is a radiation of that holiness and the divine power so every christian particularly every priest and religious we have to radiate that power of the resurrection of the holiness of the most holy trinity which is indwelling in us indwelling in us this indwelling in us is not simply not simply not simply inside us when we say indwelling we are like this glass a person and the god is in us no that is not the indwelling so that is what jesus said here when so in that john chapter 14 20 says on that day you will realize now pay attention now read now all of you must open that page please read that on that day you will realize what is the realization you have to realize what is the realization you will realize we're 20 1420 you will realize a very small word <laughs> but it is a big thing on that day you will realize that i am i am in my father and i am in my father and you are in me you are in me and i in you you will realize so when he say i am in my father he do not speak about holy spirit all this time he was speaking about holy spirit but now he don't speak about holy spirit why we have to understand here we have to realize here when he says i am in my father so who is there who is there holy spirit is already there because i am in my father when i am united with the father we are one then naturally there is holy spirit only through holy spirit the love of god the father the love of jesus so in earlier he says when he comes 1426 1426 yeah that is afterwards he says that you get the holy spirit that the father will send in my name so this holy spirit is first of all making the father and the son in one and next part he says and i in you and you in me see and you are in me and i in you you are in me you you that is the desire apostles or any one of us you are in me and i in you <laughs> so is it this is simultaneously simultaneously 
when Christ is in us, simultaneously we are in Christ. So this is, uh, in English, in any word, there is no word for this. Is there any word for this? That is why it is a mystery. It is beyond the explanation of word. We make maximum we can say it is not indwelling, it is a interdwelling. Interdwelling. Interdwelling means simultaneously when I am in my father, I am in Jesus, Jesus is in me. But before that he says that I am in my father. So I am in my father and father is in me. So already the trinity and that trinity is in you and you are in the trinity. So that is the greatest. So now after this in verse 23 he explained it more clearer. If you Whoever loves me. Now this love is relating to the commandment, the new commandment. Here he say commandment means it is not only the ten commandments. Here he say the commandment means just now, this is in one night, the same evening when he instituted the commandment. After that, within few minutes he is speaking this. So here the commandment is not only ten commandment, but all the ten commandment is possible to observe only with this one commandment that love one another as I love you. So that with that reference he is telling, whoever loves me will keep my word. My word is this commandment. And then what will happen? Then my father will love him. The father will love him means John Paul II, Saint John Paul II says, this love of the father is an uncreated love. So that is the famous expression of Saint John, God is love. God is love. He is not creating love. God is love. Okay. So now, <laughs> now he says, whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him. Now, please read. And we, this is the one place I don't think any other place this word is used like this. We. What he meant by we? The Trinity. We will come and make our home or our dwelling with him. Make our dwelling. And now, I want to explain this whole chapter 14 in a perspective. Chapter 14, 1 to 6. Now you just watch, 1 to 6, Jesus is explaining about himself. Do not let your heart be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. Then he speak about himself. And ending with word 6, the great I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. Where to its where? Where to the Trinity? Where to the Father? Where to the heaven? I am the way. It is not that you are coming through a way, but I am the way. Nobody can come to the Father unless you come through this I am through me. So from 1 to 6, he speak about who is he. And 7 to 14, he speak about the Father. 7 to 14, he says, whoever see me, see the Father. Because Father, nobody see. Nobody saw him. Nobody can see. But whoever see me, see the Father. And then he says in 12, 
Whoever believes in me shall do all that I do and greater things than I do. <laughs> Can you imagine this? This is what we have to activate. Whoever believes in me shall do all that I do and greater things than I do because I am going to the Father. That is about his passion, death and resurrection and ascension. So what happened in the ascension? He said, I will attract everyone. Now we already understood in incarnation, in incarnation, he assumed us on his body. So from incarnation onwards, the humanity is already in his body. It is that body is lifted up on the cross through his passion. He destroyed the sin and buried our body. That is, we are in his body. That body is buried and resurrected. Now what happened during the resurrection? A new body has come. A glorified body has come. The old is buried. Old is gone. He speak about an example of a seed. A seed when it is planted, it dies. And then comes a new tree. This we must understand. That is our baptism. Through his passion, through his death, we were in his body, we were buried, and in his resurrection, we became a new creation, new creation. And when he ascended to heaven, where have we gone? We were taken to heaven. So Ephesians chapter 2, 6, Ephesians chapter 2, 6 says, In raised from the dead, he took our body and we are sitting at the right hand of the Father. That is why he said, when I am, because I am going to the Father, you shall do greater things. Ephesians 2, 6. Ephesians 2, 6. Don't leave John 14. Keep a hold on John 14. Ephesians 2, 6. Raised us up with him. Can you believe this? Raised us up with him. Seated us with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the heaven. So when Jesus ascended, he took the whole humanity with him. Bodily. Now, what is the situation of the Trinity? Trinity means we always think Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Is that the Trinity? But from incarnation onwards, this God the Son become Emmanuel. But with one Trinity, he is consubstantial with the Father, consubstantial with the Holy Spirit. But in incarnation, he also consubstantial with the humanity. So he become Emmanuel. And then after the resurrection, can he give up? Oh, no, no, I don't want you all human being. Go away. <laughs> can he say that? No. He took the humanity with him to the Father. Can you believe this? I take from Catechism 648. 648, I think. 648. 648. 648. Christ's resurrection is an object of hate in that it is transcendent intervention of God Himself in creation and in history. I said to you, the whole creation is now become a new creation. In it, the three divine persons act together as one and manifest their own proper characteristic. The fathers, 
power raised up Christ, his son, and by doing so, pay attention now, perfectly introduced his son's humanity, including his body, into the Trinity. So, what, why it is written including his body? What is in his body? Who is in his body? Who is in his body? The whole humanity. So, now what is the situation of the Trinity? The Trinity is Father and Holy Spirit and Son with the humanity. Because Son is now Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Now that is what we read in the Revelation. Now God is with us. From the, from the incarnation onwards, God is with the humanity. And with the ascension, he glorified us into the Father. But our so, okay. Now, now what I wanted to say is, John 14, 1 to 6, he speak about himself. 7 to 14, he speak about the Father. 15, 14. 15 to 20, he speak about the Holy Spirit. We already heard that when I pray and another helper, another helper, he will give you another helper about the Holy Spirit. And 20 to 24, he speak about the Trinity. And 25 to 30, he speak about the Trinity with humanity. How is the new humanity? New humanity is intermingled inter with the Trinity. Not only indwelling, interdwelling with the Trinity. This is chapter 14. And then he says, that is the church. So chapter 15, I am the vine, you are my branches. You know, yesterday in the bishop house, I was having supper. So the fruit was grapes. Grapes, very good grapes. You know, I'm coming from Germany. So Germany, I have enquired with many, there are so many vineyard owners. I asked them, is there any grapes on the main stem of the wine? They said, never, never, never it happens. Only on the branches. You realize it? Grapes grow only on the branches. Not on the main stem. <laughs> I tell you, this was a very attractive proposal to me. It is not written that Jesus never say, I cannot do anything without you. He cannot say, he is God. But I say, through this parable, is the last parable, that's a very important parable. It's a parable connected to a botanical fact of God's creation. This, all these plants are God's creation with the idea to spiritualize the humanity. So many parables Jesus used is all from the nature, mustard seed, or the fig tree. So here the parable of the <laughs> wine and branches. I believe God created this wine and branches to show us the church or his personal ministry means without you branches, I don't want to do any work. I am the wine, but this wine I am, now as an example I am showing in this hand. This is the main stem and these are the branches. Just understand. Is there any, any control valve here to flow only little to this branch or little to another branch? 
no control the main stem of the vine the whole what is flowing in the main stem is flowing in the branches hallelujah can you believe this that you and me we say i am a sinner yes i am a weak person yes but yet christ has elevated us to be his co-worker to evangelize to do all that i do so he says in verse 12 a believer whoever believes in me shall do all that i do how because i am going to the father i will send you the holy spirit i will give you the power of resurrection so i am the main stem and you are all my branches without any control all what the grace or holy spirit or the charisms everything flowing through the main stem will flow to the branches okay now in this understanding now already time is late now i want to bring another important point for our workshop after lunch we will have our first workshop so before that let us take matthew and luke gospel in matthew chapter 10 when jesus called the apostles what did you do did he send them to minor seminary or philosophate on theology he did not send them to the priest seminary <laughs> sorry what did he do look at here chapter 10 matthew chapter 10 jesus 10 5 one two four exact names of the apostles are written then jesus send out these 12 after instructing them thus do not go into the pagan territory or enter samaritan town go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel as you go make this proclamation straight away they are sending to proclaim no training what is that then he has given as you go make this proclamation what is that the kingdom of heaven is at hand you proclaim the kingdom of heaven is at hand then words 7 and 8 <laughs> words 8 says cure the sick raise the dead cleanse the leper drive out demons now i request all of you with your both hands raised like a slogan please repeat this come on everybody heal the sick come on louder heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the leper cast out demons i imagine these apostles when they come out what was their 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 moment they were jumping at heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the leper cast out demons go 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 to everywhere proclaim the kingdom people thought they are crazy but then it's happening <laughs> it happens now you are doing ministry among the leper you are going so many all this you are doing but are we first proclaiming the kingdom proclaim the kingdom you know uh, there are some videos i am making for a catechism school so when i made my first uh, script for a first standard catechism i have shown to some of the parents they say, oh, thomas paul this is too heavy for the first standard children they don't they will not understand it But Jesus said, and the teaching of the church says, you must start catechism from Jesus. So I explained the video 
angel came to Mary, proclaimed the proclamation, and Mary, and angel said to Mary, you must name him Jesus. So now the catechism, in catechism, I am, the script says, the teacher is asking, little children, how are you doing? Have you understand this? What did angel say to Mary? You must call him Jesus. Okay, do you know what is the meaning of Jesus? You don't know. What is the meaning of Jesus? And the teacher has to say, so the script will show what is the reference in the catechism. In the catechism, 430 says, Jesus is a Hebrew word that means God saves. God saves. So I wrote there, children, Jesus is a Hebrew word, means God saves. And this is what the parents are telling, oh, these children will not understand this. Now tell me, how to do the catechism? If they don't want even to say Jesus. So I was so much, <sighs> a little bit upset. I came to the Lord. Oh Lord, see, this is what the parents are telling. Then Jesus said very lovingly, when he talked to me very lovingly, he has another expression. <laughs> he says, Thomas, eh? He called me Thomas, eh? Thomas. Thomas, eh? It's my vernacular expression of my name. Thomas, eh? Thomas, pay attention. When I was, I went to the house of the widow whose son died, I want to console her and also I want to show them a mystery. And he said, I laid my hand on the dead body of this boy who died, the young man. And I said, young man, I set you a race. So maybe the people around who were carrying the dead body and all the people who came to, they might have thought, what crazy man is this, uh, this dead boy? How can he say race? As they were thinking, this boy, the dead man, rose up. Now the Lord asking me, everybody, raise your hand, be awake, heal the sick, come on, heal the sick, Raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. Jesus is asking me, Jesus is asking me, this young man rose up, is it because of he understand what I said? Did he understand what I said? How he raised? How he came back to life? Is it because he understood what I said? This was a big eye-opener for me. The Lord is asking me, is it because he understood what I said? Young man, I said to you, race. See, we must know this is the power of Jesus' own words. It is not necessary they understand. They may not understand. The whole humanity's understanding is tarnished because of the original sin. The original sin created such a tarnishment even after baptism, our understanding still continued to be influenced by a concupiscence. Concupiscence. We need a illumination through faith. So we who are going to evangelize must know it is not by their understanding, but by the power of resurrection, the power of the word of God, the inherent power of the word of Christ is Christ himself 
that power has power to penetrate into the body mind and the soul and to raise him up he again said did i speak to lazarus did he understand when i said lazarus come out he came back to life is it because of his understanding when i said to the girl talita come did she understand so similar way when i said to the samaritan woman did she understand it is not because of her understanding because of the transforming power of the word of god so we who evangelize must have this conviction we must understand that it should not be because of their understanding they are evangelized it is because of the supernatural divine power which is the power of alpha and omega which is the power of resurrection which is the power which is inherent in the word that should change them you don't have to change we have to believe this and you speak with that faith maybe at that time they don't say anything once one of the very big film producer i had a discussion with him so finally he said thomas paul please leave our creative field you will not understand you are all very big spiritual people we are creative people you don't understand our creativity ha huh? and he left me he was going away so i told him hey all your creativity come from the creator <laughs> i myself realize what am i talking all your creativity of producing a film directing a film all the artistic work you do is the creativity come from the creator when you glorify the creator then only it will be really a blessing oh okay okay he went away <clears throat> he had to go to london for a film premiere and after 3 days he called me by a direct call from london he said brother i am sorry my understanding was not right what you said is true all creativity what i have is from god i want to come and participate in one of your retreat and he did and thereafter he stopped the commercial film production completely so the creativity is needed in evangelization all the creativity come from the creator it is given to us use this <laughs> okay so now coming to matthew and luke what god did to them he called them he gave them he sent them now go to luke luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 he summoned he summoned the 12 and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases and cure diseases and he sent them to proclaim the kingdom of god and to heal the sick the same thing so three points he called them he sent them but what happened in between <laughs> what happened in between he gave them what did he gave the power authority and charisms 
gifts of the holy spirit so even as you are called as a religious as a novice or a seminarian all of us are called even believers all of us are called and to send them but in between he gave them power and authority now they have been not afterwards they might have been sent for studies in seminary <laughs> so i remember in one of the mission seminaries in north india i was giving five days retreat so i told them you are learning all isms you learn hinduism muslimism buddhism but you don't learn charism charisms are tools for evangelization suppose you call a carpenter to make a table or an altar what do you expect him to bring he must bring the proper tools can he work without the proper tools so we are all called to evangelize so first thing god will equip us with the proper tools and he has already done so in this seminar in this session what we are going to recognize more and more is what are the tools for evangelization which he has already given to us so in the priest seminary i don't know whether you learn even one hour about that one hour learning about the charisms but we are trained for evangelization you see the pattern what jesus did jesus first gave them the practical method to evangelize thereafter he will teach the theory here we are first learning the theory whether we learn practical or not is a question so jesus first gave them practical so that's what we are going to do we have to believe through baptism through confirmation through eucharist through holy spirit these gifts are already in us already in us now come on everybody heal the sick raise the raise the dead cleanse the leper cast out demons are you afraid about it believe that these gifts are already given to us once again everybody heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the leper cast out demons so these words have to be understood in a more detailed way but one thing is there this spiritual power is needed for evangelization without that we cannot evangelize we cannot touch the soul of a person hallelujah so let us pray now just close your eyes and thank god and believe that the holy trinity is dwelling in us and jesus said you will do greater things than i do because i am going to the father i am going to the father so already he, he has given while his public life itself a sample so the a sample how we have to evangelize but now after the pentecost these gifts will start working in us in a very high profile using that you have to evangelize so let us praise god thank you jesus everybody praise god thank you jesus shall we stand up shall we stand up and open your mouth and praise god hallelujah 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 praise you jesus thank you jesus Thank you Jesus praise you Jesus thank you lord hallelujah 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 praise you Jesus thank you Jesus oh holy spirit 
Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Empower us Holy Spirit. Empower us Holy Spirit. Anoint us Holy Spirit. Anoint us Holy Spirit. Open our anointing. Open our anointing. Open our fragrance. Oh Holy Spirit, use us to be a powerful evangelizer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Everybody, Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, and use us. Spirit of the living God fall afresh on us. Amen, amen, amen. Please be seated. Now, during the break time, there is no silence. That is the beauty of this retreat or this workshop. Are you happy? But one condition, you should not talk anything else other than Something what you heard here, okay? You must talk to one another, asking questions or sharing. This is what I understood. Or ask the sister or the father or brother or sisters what you understand. So please share about this concept. Don't go away from this concept because we have only limited time. So this will be the way you have to... You don't keep silence, you discuss, you talk. This matters. Thank you. Okay.